Uh, let us start the third segment in our uh, second module. So far we have uh, uh, looked at um, the expectation of a random variable. What we will do this time is uh, look at um, extending the idea to include what is called conditional expectation. Um, and there are two variants of this notion of conditional expectation. So, we look at the first variant uh, in this class uh, in this segment and then uh, we look at the second variant in the um, uh, there are related notions is just that the same term conditional expectation is used to denote two different uh, slightly different context uh, concepts. Let me motivate that by looking at what is called a branching process it is a very uh, simple process, but it is a very very useful process that shows up a lot. And uh, so, I motivate this in the context of uh, uh, just trying to understand the population of a species. So, for example, uh, let us take rabbits. Um, and normally when you try to model populations a lot of times what they do is uh, they simplify it and just focus on the females in the species. Okay. So, uh, now uh, there is you start off with one uh, mother if you will and uh, so you make the assumption that uh, each mother gives birth once uh, and that is this is again an assumption uh, once to a random number of daughters from and this random number is drawn from the binomial distribution. Uh, with parameters n and p. Uh, this is just of course, a modeling assumption the real world may not work exactly this way, but we are just going to use this to understand how things work. Okay. So, uh, let us say the first mother gave, gives birth to some four daughters and in their generation those four give birth to their own daughters some three, some two and so on. And uh, so, you have generations where they um, give birth to daughters. And uh, as you can see this is a very obviously something uh, uh, a population that branches out. So, it is often called a branching process and shows up a lot in uh, evolutionary systems even in, uh, in computer science it shows up when uh, one function can spawn uh, other functions. So, what, what is clear is if you fix a mother you know the expected number of daughters and that is n times p. Okay, we already saw it, uh, but what is uh, not clear is what is the number of expected number of daughters in some generation i. So, in the in the first uh, generation we saw we know that, but how do we extend that to um, an arbitrary ith generation that is the question. And of course, um, intuitively it should be um, n p in the first generation n p the whole squared in the second generation and n p whole to the 3 in the third generation and so on. In, there should be some intuition here, but we do not have uh, what we have studied so far does not guarantee that I mean the, the formalism does not work out the intuition might work out, but the formalism is what we need and that is what we are going to develop in this and the next segment. So, let us see for example, if you if you know that at a part that some particular generation there are k mothers, okay. then the number expected number of daughters is k times uh, n p. This is applying linearity of expectation over the k mothers. So, I can write it this way expected number of daughters given that the number of mothers is equal to k equals k n p. Okay. And this is something we just seem to have made up, but actually this is uh, there is a formal definition in general. So, you you take any uh, two random variables x and y, you can have what is called the conditional expectation of x uh, conditioned on y equals uh, a particular value. So, in this case uh, for in the previous uh, slide uh, y represented uh, the number of mothers and x represents the number of daughters. Okay. So, when the number of mothers is a specific value, then you, you can ask what is the expected number of daughters. And uh, as you would expect, um, the uh, formula is very very straightforward. If it were, if it didn't have the condition, it would be summation x uh, x times the probability of x. But because there's the conditionality over here, you add the conditionality to the probability as well. Essentially, what are you doing? We're taking the sample space and uh, saying, okay, let's limit our sample space to just this one portion where uh, y equals uh, the little y. Okay that is all we are doing. And you can generalize this a little bit you can um, remember y equal to y this is just an, ex, uh, an event unfortunately re, um, reusing um, e here 
uh, okay, so maybe think of um, expectation of x given some other event f can also be written in a similar fa fashion. So, uh, apologies for uh, reusing the letter e here. Okay. Uh, the first type of conditional expectation where you are conditioning on a particular uh, event. So, let us uh, look at um, an example some examples. Uh, so, x 1 and x 2 let us say they are two random numbers obtained from uh, two independent calls to a random number generator uh, which range with range from 1 to 10. So, you, or you can think of it as a 10 sided die if you will um, and you have expectation of x 1 equals expectation of x 2. 5.5. Uh, Let us uh, look at the sum of those two outcomes. So, x equal to x 1 plus uh, x 2. Expectation of x we know by linearity of expectation is 11. Question is what is the expectation of x given that the first uh, random number generator generated 2 and uh, what is that? Well, now again you can uh, in this case what we are doing is uh, summing over all the values. So, what are we doing over here? X 1 is fixed at 2. Okay. So, the only variable is really x 2. So, what uh, how are we applying this? So, we are just varying the values that x 2 can take. Okay. So, so that is ranging from 1 to 6, but then here internally we are considering uh, what is the outcomes. It is uh, this the first outcome is fixed at 2, the second outcome is the value i and that will happen uh, with probability 1 6. Remember the whole sample space is limited to just the second uh, uh, second random number generator. The first one is fixed at 2. Okay. So, that is why you have a 1 over 6 over here which is which comes out to be 7.5 which is making a lot of sense because the first one when it is fixed at uh, 2 the, the second one ha contributes 5.5 to the expectation you get 7.5. Uh, 1 over 6 over here, uh, 1 over oh, uh, 1 over 6 because now um, because the first uh, random number generator is fixed at 2, the, the randomness only depends on the second uh, random number, sorry that is an error. So, that should be 1 to uh, 10. I think I just flipped in my mind from a random number from 1 to 10 to a die in my head. So, while I was doing the slide. So, thanks for uh, pointing that out. So, that is an error. So, that has to be updated. So, that has to be worked out with this going up to 10 and this also will have to be a uh, 10, but if you work it out <laughs> I think the final answer based on the intuition is correct. So, sorry about that, but the final answer is still uh, correct. Another interesting uh, variance. So, let us hope I have not um, made any mistakes here. Let us see expectation of um, x 2 given that x equal to 3. Here uh, what are we doing? Uh, so, now uh, this capital X is the summation. So, he, here we are not we are, we are conditioning on the fact that the sum is 3. If the sum is 3 we are asking what is the expectation of x 2. Okay. But now x 2 can only take a few values it can take either the value 1 or 2. Uh, it cannot take the value 3 or more. Why? Because if it takes the value 3 or more, it will have to be then added to the first item, first value and then it this conditioning will not work. Okay. So, you are left with either 1 or 2. So, 1 times the probability that x 2 s value is uh, one, uh, 1 again with the conditioning plus 2 times the probability of x 2 uh, taking the value 2 with the conditioning and uh, if you uh, work that out just apply the formula for conditional probability uh, it works out to about 1.5 and that should make intuitive sense to you. Given that the sum is 3 the uh, x 2 will either be 1 or 2 uh, with equal likelihood and so 1.5 seems to be the right answer and that is what we get through formal verification of this. So, some quick properties of this. Uh, so, basically uh, this is just repetition of ideas that we already know, but we want to view it through this um, uh, conditional expectation notion. So, we know this notion of law of total probability. Does it apply when you uh, view it from the conditional expectation uh, point of view? Yes, as it turns out. So, the claim is this the expectation of x is equal to uh, the sum over all values y probability of um, 
y equal to y. So, this, this basically covers the entire space times the expectation of x even when you have conditioned according to uh, y. So, how do we show this? Let us just uh, look at the start from the right hand side and here uh, the what we are doing is in the right hand side we have this expectation term we simply expand that out apply the formula and uh, from that uh, expression we collect the summations. Uh, so, we uh, get x summation x summation y and everything is inside of it, but now what we have over here is probability x equal to x given y equal to y times probability of y equal to y that is of course, uh, uh, probability of x equal to x intersected with y equal to y okay, conditional probability uh, formula and uh, so now what we are doing this x does not depend on y, so it can be brought out and uh, what we have here is summation y and we have x equal to x intersected with y equal to y and what is this law of total probability that is going to be just probability of x equal to x. So, you get expectation of x ok. So, law of total probability what about uh, linearity of expectation again that will also hold. So, I will spare you the proof, but essentially what are we asking. So, under uh, again I have made this uh, so, let us assume this is some other event f ok. So, the expectation of a s the sum of several random variables each conditioned upon some event say f is equal to the sum of their individual expectations each conditioned on the same f. So, this as you would expect ok, you can work that uh, the details out basically it this is a very intuitive thing to state right. So, all that conditioning does is it uh, it redefines the sample space it carves out a new sample space, but still is a sample space nevertheless and from which a probability space is defined therefore, the expectation should uh, the, the linearity of expectation should hold that is the intuition here ok. So, back to the branching uh, process what does this conditional expectation give you when when it when you can condition on uh, the number of mothers you get the number of daughters. So, uh, what this tells you is if at the i minus 1 at the generation if you will if there are some uh, k mothers then in the next generation there will be k times n times p daughters. So, it, it gives you a step in the induction if you will, but it still does not tell you what happens over the course of the entire uh, uh, population's evolution. So, uh, we are still short of trying to understand what the expected uh, number of daughters in generation i will be ok. This question this red question is still not addressed yet. We know it conditioned on the previous generation, but we do not know it in general ok. So, uh, that is still something that needs to be addressed and that is what we are going to address in the next segment where we will talk about the second notion of conditional expectation and we will revisit this branching process and try to understand that uh, the answer to that uh, question ok.